Hello. Do you like jumping into water and splashing about? Well, so does Alfie. This story is called Alfie Upstream. One hot summer afternoon, when Alfie and Annie Rose and Mum and Dad were staying with Grandma, Mum and Alfie decided to go exploring. It was going to be just the two of them. Annie Rose was going to stay behind in the garden with Dad. They set out through the little gate into the field. Jim Gatting's pig was lying flat on its stomach under the big tree. It was too hot to take any notice of them. They walked right across the field until it began to slope steeply down to where trees and thick bushes grew. Alfie had never been this far before. It was then that they heard the sound of running water. Alfie was very excited. They climbed under some wire, and there, in the thick green shade, they found a little running stream. Now we're real explorers, Mum said. The stream was shallow and had a gravelly bottom and floating weeds. Alfie and Mum took off their shoes and waded in. It was beautifully cool. They splashed along. It was very quiet except for the buzzing insects and the sound the water made. Sometimes they came to some squelchy muddy bits and sometimes a big stone in the middle of the stream which they had to climb over. And once Alfie saw a dragonfly with shimmering wings hovering over the surface. Then they came to a place where a tree had fallen down like a bridge across the water. Beyond that the stream widened into a little pool. It was deeper there. It came up to above Alfie's knees, but he and Mum were brave explorers and didn't care about a little thing like wet shorts. They climbed onto the bank. There was a smooth grassy space, and in the middle of it a little apple tree with branches which hung over the stream. The apples were still hard and green. They sat with their feet in the water and threw little apples into sea, which would make the biggest plop. Mum stretched out on the grass. I think we found the Garden of Eden, Alfie, she said sleepily. Right away, Alfie wanted to know what kind of a garden that was. So Mum told Alfie the story of how, at the beginning of the world, when all the plants and fishes and birds and animals were brand new, there were only two people on earth, a man and a woman called Adam and Eve. And they lived in a beautiful garden called Eden and were free like the animals. A river ran through the garden and they had all they needed to eat. But there was one fruit they were not allowed to pick and that was an apple from a very special tree. But... One day the snake, who was full of cunning, told Eve to pick the apple. Eve knew she shouldn't, but she just couldn't resist it. So she took a bite, and so did Adam, and after that things were never the same again. Adam and Eve had to leave the Garden of Eden forever. They could never go back because the gate was guarded by an angel with a flaming sword. And from that day on, they were no longer free like the animals. They had to work hard for their living. Like Dad and me, said Mum. Althea thought about this. Well, I hope the apple was a nice juicy one. Anyway, not all hard and green like these ones are. Just at that moment, a very surprising thing happened. Right in between where their feet were dangling in the stream, a real snake, a little brownish-green one, shot out of a hole in the bank. It wriggled out into the pool, slipping very fast through the water, and disappeared under the fallen tree. Alfie was too surprised to be frightened. Just like the story, he whispered. Mum said, 
It wouldn't have hurt us. It was too busy minding its own business. They sat there without talking for quite a long while, until it was time to go home. And neither Alfie nor Mum ever forgot that time and that place. Well, if you're patient and quiet, you can see lots of wild creatures in the countryside, just like that snake. But sometimes these creatures come into towns to live amongst us, just like this fox. Sharp eyes, sharp nose, long bushy tail, pointed ears that miss nothing. He's on the trail, up by the waste ground, down by the railway cutting, ranging the edge of the playing field, hunting for worms. By day he's sunning himself on the lean-to roof, or lying low under the shed. But by night he is out and about, searching the rubbish bins, looking for titbits, chicken takeaways, fish and chips, and the remains of school dinners. Sometimes, under a winter moon, you can hear the shrieking bark of a dog fox calling to his wife. And on spring evenings in a quiet, overgrown place near the empty building site, the fox cubs come out to play, to frolic and bite and pretend to fight. Watch out for your rabbit. Lock up your hamster. No matter what people say, the town fox is here to stay. I've had lots of foxes come into my garden, usually with their young. I think they felt very safe there, and they loved playing. One of them was very brave and came up to me to take my strawberry jam sandwich from my hand. It was a lovely moment. Bye-bye.